Hello everyone, my name is Cara Wilkins. I am a District Integration Technology Specialist for the Little Public Schools and this was my department's um, presentation on technology hardware to support concurrent learning. So just for reference as we're talking, um, I'm going to be using the term roomies and zoomies. Roomies meaning students that are face-to-face -face in school and zoomies meaning students that are coming in through teleconferencing, whether it be Zoom or Google Meets. I call them zoomies, but they can also be meaties as well. Doesn't sound as cute though, roomies and meaties. So let's get going. Okay, so the district purchased these webcams. And so one of the first questions is, why should I use the webcam at all? So the camera allows you to not be tethered to your desk. It has about 10 feet of cord because it comes with an extension cord. So you'd be able to set it up different from where your actual laptop or desktop is going to be. Many people are going to hook up one of their computers, you know, they're going to pick up a laptop or a desktop to um, a projector. And it might be the Epsons or Hitachis, the smart boards, but they're going to be hooking it up. And so that means that the computer is going to need to be near the board to be able to hook up. The web camera would allow you a little bit more flexibility in being able to see um, different views in the classroom other than what the actual computer is seeing. Okay. Um, some teachers have put the camera next to a student so the zoomies have the same view as a student so a teacher might be at the front of the classroom in front of a whiteboard and they put the camera right next to them right next to a student in the front row and they can actually see that's wonderful that works really good with like smart boards and whiteboards it does not work well with an interactive panel because it's actually like a camera taking a picture of a television and you get the gritty line so that works really well with smart boards or whiteboards some teachers have put the camera so the zoomies have a wider view of the classroom. I've been working on that a lot with teachers this week that were putting it like on the top of the whiteboard or the top of a smart board so that the zoomies have a full view of this classroom. And I've been in some classes where students get to see it and they're super excited. They're really excited to see the classroom. So that's another thing. Um, it would also be great in science de demonstrations. So we're not going to be really handing out materials for students to be doing experiments and especially getting those materials to home. So if a teacher was doing a little bit of a science experiment on, you know, friction and momentum and things rolling, they could put the camera on the tripod and it could capture this um, movement and it can be like zoomed in and they'd be able to see your hands and just what is going on as opposed to a big wide picture of this activity. Um, so here's what you're going to get. You're going to get, most likely, unless somebody's opened the package. I'm sorry if somebody opened the package. But if you haven't, if, if you get it like this, that means the packages haven't been opened. You're going to get the video camera in the box. You're going to get a small tripod. This is a small tripod. It's a white box. And then you're also going to get an extension cord. Okay. So this is what the camera looks like when you open it up. Um, if you'd like to use a tripod, you can screw it right into the bottom of the camera right there. Um, I said in my presentation, my live ones, that tripods are universal. So if you have a larger tripod that you want to use, if you have like a full size tripod that you put like, you know, a video camera on or something, yep, you could use that. Um, selfie sticks actually have a universal tripod mount, so you could actually do that. There's a lot of different ways that you could actually mount this. So that's what it's going to look like once it's all together and mounted. And then if you want the tripod to be higher, um, higher, you've got these little feet at the bottom. You can actually unscrew them and pull them out. And so there we go. It gives you like another inch and a half, two inches of height. Okay, so the camera comes with a cord, but the cord wasn't long enough. So we've given you an extension cord that's about nine ish so feet long. And you can see here, it's just a USB plug. You're going to plug this right into that. And that's what it's going to look like. 
So the cord gets inserted into an available USB port on your computer. So this, some people have been having some difficulty with this and a lot of it has to do with dirty USB cords. We've had, USB ports. We've had our computers for a while. And I know personally, I couldn't get this to work until I had cleaned out my ports. So the big way you clean out a port is through air. So either you go old school Nintendo and just and blow into it seriously i do this all the time or i also i don't have one on me right now but i have like the compressed air a lot of classrooms have a compressed air can inside the closets it was given to people when we did some technology rollover i know in my old classroom i had like three cans if not you can get it at walmart in the tech section you can get it at amazon and so basically it pushes out air really quick and it loosens up all the dirt and so when i did that my usb cord my usb ports worked again because they hadn't been working for a while all of mine so clean it out and try it again um even inside the cord do a little <laughs> blow <laughs> and just make sure all the dust and lint and other stuff are out and that should help um when you hook up the camera nothing is going to happen I know we are kind of programmed to see a flashing or a beeping or have a dialog box pop up on our computer. Nothing is going to happen. The only thing that's going to let us know that the camera is working is we have to actually open some sort of website or software that asks for a camera. So for us, it's going to be Zoom or Google Meet. That's why, how you'll know. So here we go. So if you are using Zoom, and sorry, I have, I'm going to move my stuff up here so that we can see all the words. So um, basically, you plug it in, you open up Zoom, you go right here to the little upside down V. And if it's working, you should see this TVWCAMG1. That is going to, that is the camera. And when you click on that, then it's going to just pop in and they will take over the camera view. Now, if you wanna turn it off, you just come here and choose FaceTime. The nice thing is, is that you are not married to using this all day long. You could do one lesson, come in, turn on the video camera, go back in, turn it off, go back and turn it. You can make this work for you however you would like. Um, audio is the same thing. The the, the webcam does have a microphone on it. Um, if you would like to use it, you come to where the mute button is and you do the upside down V. And the audio is actually called N300. N300 is the name of the microphone. So you would, quick, you would click that and now the audio isn't going to be collected from your computer, it's gonna be collected from the webcam. And the same thing, you wanna to toggle back and forth, you just come in, click on you would be a built-in microphone click off click on and you'd be able to do that as much as you need to during the day so google me the first time i plugged it in and opened up a google me the webcam automatically took over the second time i did it it didn't take over so i just want to show you how to do it in zoom it won't take over you have to go turn in but in google me um, I found it worked both ways. So you're going to come here to your snowman. And then you're going to click on settings. And then here we go. So settings, you're going to have your audio settings, your video settings, and your general. So you have to click on the side to get the settings that you want to work with. So video, I want, it's the same thing, TVWCAMG1. So perfect. I click that. And now my camera takes, my webcam takes over. Same thing is true as in Zoom. I don't want to use the webcam now. I want them to see my face to face. I can go in, settings, video, FaceTime camera, boom, life goes back to normal. Okay. Audio, same thing. So I'm going to click on the audio on the left hand side and then I'm going to choose the N300 for my audio. And again, same exact thing. I don't want to use that audio anymore. I want them grabbing it from my computer. I'm just going to come back into my settings. And when you do that, the kids don't see you go into settings. So don't worry about like being fearful that the kids see you doing all this. They can't see you. Okay. 
So splitting the screen with a projector, and I've been working on this with teachers this week, and it's, it's actually been pretty successful for most people trying it. Many teachers have ex suggested using what would be called the extended screen or the second screen option on the Mac computer to share content with both groups. So the idea would be, I'm gonna hook in, I'm gonna hook my computer, and I have a video on this. So I have a video. So I'm just gonna kind of talk about it right now, but I'll point you to the video. So um, I'm going to, basically, I'm going to hook up my computer to my projector like I did in pre-pandemic times. But instead of mirroring, which means what's on my computer is on the projector, I'm going to click off mirroring and I'm going to create a second desktop. I'm going to create a larger desktop. And so what you would do, and this works with the long throw projectors, and by long throw I mean like the ones that are like, boxy and you're on a cart and you roll them it works for the old smart boards with the hitachi projectors the epson projectors that we have in the district and now we're bringing in the interactive displays which are like huge tablets we've got the prometheans the clear touches the view sonics it works with this as well so what you would do is teachers suggested to me that so you you take off the mirroring and again i have a video for this and then what they do is they drag whatever their content is over to their second screen. Over, I'm sorry, the second screen is the actual projector, the, what is being seen by your roomies. So now, and then when they share screen, they share that desktop. So in Zoom, what you would do is you would share screen and you would say, I wanna share desktop two. And what's going to happen now is that the roomies are going to see your content. It might be a Jamboard, it might be Google Slides, it might be Nearpod, it might be a Kahoot. So the zoomies are going, the roomies are going to see it up on the board. And because you shared it, the zoomies are going to see it on their computer. And then you on your computer are going to see your participants, your students, and you're going to be running the content up on the second screen. So it allows you a lot of flexibility in how you can get kids at home and kids in school to see things. In Google Meet, it works the same way. You go to your present now. And I did both window and tab, and they both worked. I actually preferred window. I'm going to show you. And I preferred window because I could physically see it. So it said, what window do you want to present? So this was my window that was on my second desktop, my extended desktop. But you can do it in tab. Um, my issue was that I didn't know like this one or this one. I didn't know which one was on the second screen because obviously I had it open in two places. That's my fault. If I know that it's open in one place, then that would make it a little bit easier. And as they said here, I want to show you that presenting in a tab is best for video and animation. So if I'm doing video, I probably want to do the tab. I just need to not do what I did, which is have two of the same thing open. My mind is always going with two of the same thing open. Okay, so um, second monitors and do document cameras, if you have access to another monitor, you can extend as well, and you could actually have a desktop three. So I just wanted to say, like, if you had your computer hooked up to the projector and you had your computer hooked up to another monitor, your laptop is desktop one, the projector is desktop two, and then you could have another monitor and three. Um, you can still connect a document camera in this configuration. Um, some of you guys, you plug it into the computer, whatever plug and play it is, a lot of them are USB ports. Um, but then with the Epson projectors, if you have the Epson projectors, if you remember before the pandemic, a lot of times your document camera was plugged into the wall because usually underneath the Epsons is like um, a white, white plate that has different connections underneath in Epson and there's an HDMI cable, there's USB, there's a 12 pin. So that's where usually, and that is actually like connecting right to the projector because you can't get to the projector because it's high, right? It's above you. So the actual plate is in the wall. Um, you can use your webcam as a document camera. So I'm just pointing this out for two reasons. Not everybody in the district has a dot camera. I taught middle school and I didn't have a dot camera. Um, I know a lot of our elementary school teachers do and our math teachers do, but not everybody has one. So if you don't have a dot camera, this is awesome. Also, if you do have a dot camera, but you find you're running out of 
holes on your computer, ports to put things into, and you're already using this camera, maybe you want to use it for both. So if you see here, you can remove the tripod and place it on a stand, a pile of books, etc. I got my pile of books right here. And then um, when you first hook it up, by default, it's going to be backwards. It's going to be a mirror image. So like the word hello would be exclamation point, O-L-L-E-H backwards. So I had to flip my image. So what you do is you go in, you go in your Zoom, you go to your stop video, you click on the upside down V, you go to video settings, and it's right here. When you open video settings, you click off of mirror my video and then you're going to get hello in the right direction and so i could actually be sitting there showing them things writing on the paper and they could see what i was doing in meets for those of you guys who use google meets we know we love it but everything needs an extension so i found this cam flip extension that was really good i used it myself it works and so um what it does is you install the extension um, here it is. This is the one you would look up in your Chrome store. You install the extension, and then what it does is it renames the videos Cam Flipped FaceTime, Cam Flipped TV, WCAM. So install it, follow the directions, and then go into your settings and make sure that you've chosen the right one and the names have gone over and it flipped it out. The only stinky thing is there was a little um like cam flip insignia on it because I didn't pay <laughs> but that's okay I didn't I didn't mind that terribly um a lot of you guys have a silver back inside your class or access to a silver back so how might you use these so just one thing IT did tell me that if you are using you know you're going to be logging into the silver back with your username and password you're going to be logging into your computer they said that there might be some issues that arise because you're logged into two different places and it's not, you know, when we log in, what we're doing is we're telling the teacher, the computer that we're a teacher. So it gives us access to everything. They, they said that it could happen that it gives, it takes away access to YouTube because it doesn't know which computer is the teacher. My suggestion is make sure you're shutting these down every night and starting them back up. I used two computers like this in my classroom for a long time and I didn't have issues. IT told me we will eventually have issues, but if we shut down and then log back in every morning, we're kind of telling them what we're a teacher and I'm hoping that is going to help. Um, so if so, how might you use this as a second computer? Um, I would totally recommend you kind of use it like as a teacher computer. Um, so, you know, checking emails. Um, so making it like a teacher station, right? Checking emails running cahoots, quizzes, Nearpod, Pear Deck, like when you're actually running them and you want to see that lifetime data, you could be doing that. You could be running them and launching them from the from the second computer. Um, Bloxy, you could have your Bloxy going on your second computer so that your first computer is just sharing content and running the Zoom and your second one is where you can monitor kiddos. Um, Sorry, I ummed again. At join your Zoom or Google Meets. I was in a classroom the other day where the teacher had the Zoom was initiated on her laptop. And then she also had it going on the silverback and she joined her own meeting. And she was actually, this was actually cool. She was using the video camera because the kids liked the view of the classroom, but they said they preferred that when she was teaching that she was in front of the computer like this. So she had, she, she would talk to the silverback and, and I'm doing like in directions. She would talk to the silverback when they she wanted to show her face and then the other camera was hooked up so that they could see a wide view of the room it was pretty fancy and she did awesome and it was great um so it give it could give you a better view of all the students and then monitoring the chat so you might have zoom open on the second computer so that you can actually monitor the chat and then like I said I said in a couple of my other ones that some teachers put a student in charge of alerting the teacher of questions in the chat so they might be looking at it well there we go so please do not hesitate to reach out I am Cara Wilkins I am the bottom one but I work with two amazing other tech specialists Veronique Roberts and Art Santos please feel free to reach out to us about anything and um, 
good luck. I hope this helps. Bye.